Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today I have, a, this is a, a kind of a weird video because it's an update from a previous video to address a whole lot of questions and feedback I got. And on top of that, it's a pretty cool little tip or trick to have in your back pocket. So this is how to capture packets natively in Microsoft Windows. So I'm gonna just uh, jump right into it like I always do because I know it's gonna be hard to describe until you get into it. So just a few points and a quick disclaimer. This technique is not a replacement for a proper packet capture solution. I've not tested packet loss and latency accuracy of this technique. And these are, these are some of the things that people have asked me about when I did this first version of the video a while ago. This is a good method to capture packets when you need to see what's going on. So if you just need to know what devices are talking to and flows and do like dependency analysis, this is a great way to do that. It's also a great solution if you can't install Wireshark on a client's computer. I'm running that into that a lot lately. I go to a client's place and the person's computer is quote unquote locked down and you can't install anything. And if you do, they have software that takes it out or sends an alert to a management station. Uh, so you don't want to get into that. And then to get around that, what we do is we use things like taps. If you use an Ethernet tap, then you got to worry about port security. Then you can use a USB tap, and it just it goes on and on and on. So this is a cool little way to do it. It's built into Windows. So make sure you're using an elevated command prompt or run in administrative mode. This is the only thing that might cause you a problem because I've seen some places where they don't allow people to run the command prompt for obvious reasons. But that, that's a very, very, I'm going to say a small portion, a minority of the things I've run into. This usually works okay. So spend some time going through the net sh trace command. So there's some help screens around that for your specific scenario and configuration. And the reason why I say that is because once you see the command, there's a whole host of stuff you can do. I am not covering anywhere close to even a quarter of those commands because this video would be like five hours it's not worth it I'm just going to show you how to get started with it and then you can play around with it and figure out any extra stuff that you might need so the first command is net sh trace show interfaces and this is a lot like when you do t shark or dump cap space dash d and it shows you an interface list same idea for net sh so this will show you the interfaces um, I had a ton of them virtual and whatnot so this is a an excerpt from mine and you can see it's got my ethernet it's got Bluetooth and it's got a Wi-Fi. I just kind of left those three up for you. And it tells you the interface index. And that's kind of important if, if you decide to use that later. It tells you, the, of course, the GUID, description, all that good stuff. So now that you know that, you can capture using a specific interface. Now, you don't need to do this. You can just hit capture and sort things out later. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So command net sh space trace show slash question mark and it will show you some of the commands that are available now these are not all the options these are commands it's really important to understand the difference so you'll you'll see what that means in a moment and this is an example of where I said every single one of these will have a whole ton of sub options and commands that you could really go down the rabbit hole with this net sh trace show capture filter help this is the big thing people asked me last time uh, that's a great command but how do I capture from just my Ethernet just my Wi-Fi how do I capture from for a specific Mac address or an IP address well this is how you do it so there are capture filters built into the net sh trace command this is again a very small excerpt this was I don't know how many multiple pages this was but I only took two little snippets out of it just to show you an example of some of the common stuff that you may want to know about and even the interface right a local area connection and that's going to be based on whatever you found out when you type that show interface command over here okay uh, let me make sure that I jump ahead no I'm good all right so testing first thing you need to do is test right don't don't do this live at somebody's desk one day because you just heard about it from me just take a few minutes to test this thing out make sure it works on your PC make sure if you have special software group policies this doesn't get affected by that all that kind of jazz so the first one is net sh trace start I'm gonna start a trace capture is yes I'm starting a capture and trace file it's obviously where you want to put your trace file um, at the end of this I put max size 11 and the reason why I did this is because the default for the max size or the buffer size is 250 megabytes. 
I didn't want that. So what this means is that it'll capture 11 meg and it will eventually stop, right? So that may be what you want to do. You can also have um, circular buffers and let the thing run on forever and all that nonsense. But again, these are all options you can look into. To stop the trace before the 11 meg buffer, just type netsh trace stop and it will stop the trace file for you. Uh, you can also get the status of it and all that kind of jazz. But the important thing to keep in mind here is that these are all command line driven um, events. So you can put this in a batch file. You can you can do almost anything you want with it, which really adds to the flexibility and the power of the command. If you do not specify a trace file, the trace file gets stored in your app data local temp, makes a folder called net traces and dumps stuff in there. So when you do type this net sh trace start capture, you'll see this gives you a little output telling you it's running and this is where it's going to go and that kind of thing. Okay. A little more testing. So now that you did that, you're probably going to want to capture from an interface. And that's where this comes in. So capture interface Wi-Fi, which again, I got from my interfaces list, right? So come back here, you'll see it said Wi-Fi. I could have also used the GUID, right? There's, there's several ways of doing this, uh, but this one is just easier. It's more English-like, if you will. And there's my trace file location. Little note, uh, I've got like F colon. That's not a USB or a network drive. That is a local drive in my computer. Try to avoid saving trace files as a general practice to USB attached devices or network attached devices. Save them locally and then copy them over, right? This will only capture packets from my Wi-Fi adapter, obviously, and then NetSH trace stop will stop your capture. Now the other one people asked about was filters. So here's an example of a filter. So the capture interface is still Wi-Fi. The IPv4 dot address equals, and then whatever you want. And then that will capture packets from my Wi-Fi interface uh, to that, to or from that IP address. Now, here's the thing. So you've done your little capture and you end up with this thing that ends with ETL. And people say, what the heck is that? Well, if you had Microsoft's Netmon, um, you could open it and then save it as a PCAP NG file uh, for Wireshark. Well, Microsoft stopped development for Network Monitor and people are kind of, you know, not happy about that because it was a pretty good analyzer. One of the Microsoft developers on GitHub put a little tiny utility called ETL2 PCAPNG and it does exactly what you think it does. It converts ETL files to PCAPNG files. It's free. There's nothing to install. So you can just run it off a, even a USB key if you like. Uh, you run it and it'll just convert the file for you. There's also another website that somebody told me about. I haven't used this yet. I looked at it. It looked okay, but I didn't test it. It's um, a web-based conversion tool that will convert your ETL files to Wireshark as well. But I've done this. You'll see this obviously in this little write-up. Okay. Now if you did not specify an interface, remember I said earlier you don't have to specify Wi-Fi, you can just run a capture and that's the end of it. What this ETL to PCAPNG does when it trans, uh, I'm going to say converts, not translates, when it converts your trace file to PCAPNG, it will spit this out. And it will say things like medium Wi-Fi, ID equals zero, IF index equals three. Now, this is kind of important because now if I want all my Wi-Fi data in my trace file, I need to go to Wireshark and filter on that. Uh, this is sometimes actually you want this. You want a machine who has like Wi-Fi Ethernet and you want to capture from everything in one shot. And this is very helpful. And other times you're just going to filter stuff out as well. So when you go to Wireshark and you look at your frame header and you right click on interface ID, you see that says zero now? Well, obviously that's the Wi-Fi data, right? The packets. So you right click on it, applies filter and select it and then bang, you'll see just the Wi-Fi packets. So there you go. So you can capture natively in your Windows machines using NetSH uh, trace. Then you can use this little free utility, ETL to PCAPNG and it will convert it to a PCAPNG file and you're good to go. So in those situations where you can't install Wireshark or anything on a machine, give this a go and it might help you out. Have a good day. Bye for now.